Hey, what's up, my friend? Are you a small business owner that loves God, family, country, and capitalism? This is the War Plan Tactical. We're going to spend a few minutes. I'm going to go slow. I'm going to break down things that, in my experience, over the last decade plus, helping over a thousand small business owners, not to mention running and building my own companies, selling some of them, operating many more. Today, I'm in the trenches just like you are. This is something I've learned that can really, really help you. And to kick things off, check this out. Most people, when they come to me and they have a question, their questions fall into just a couple of categories. They're like, how do I make more money? How do I get rich? How do I do these things? And then I'll usually follow it up with a, well, I don't know. What do you want? What's your end game? What's the success criteria for your life? And people like never know. They almost literally never know. And it's a, it's a very interesting thing because we're kind of programmed. Think, tell me if this is true for you to really know what we don't want more clearly than we know what we do want. And it's a tricky question. And the, the reason I know it's hard is when I ask people, what do you want? They give me a list of things that they don't want. They say, well, what I want is I don't want to struggle anymore. <laughs> I don't want to be broke anymore. I don't want to be stuck anymore. And what I've found over many years is that a lot of small business owners are overworked, underpaid, overwhelmed, and truly stuck. And this happens because you're trying to take care of your family. You're trying to do the right things but you get stuck into this negative inertia. You get in a rut and decades can go by. There's a lot of people I meet in their 50s and 60s that have a small family business and kind of just doing the same thing they've always done, almost like they're asleep at the wheel. They've kind of abandoned any kind of aspirational hopes and dreams of what could be. And there's actually a crisis right now with a lot of businesses that are for sale, uh, but the kids of the owners don't want to take over their parents' business. And one of the reasons why is because they grew up in this chaos, this stress, this overwhelm for decades, and it's not an appealing idea for them. So the kids go do something else, and there's actually a lot of businesses on the market right now. There's going to be even more as the baby boomers age. So here's my question to you. What do you want? Are you stuck right now? I know what that feels like, the paralyzing weight and the anxiety of being stuck. And maybe not, maybe you're crushing it, but <laughs> for whoever this is for, this could be a big deal. And I want to, you to consider a few things here. So how to get unstuck and clear on your next steps. Look at this little graphic here. It says complexity at the top, and there's a, a rat's nest of chaos, right? Is your business like that? Maybe. Uh, on the left, it says simplistic. And then on the right, it says elegant simplicity. This graphic's cool. I just found it on the internet. But it reminds me of one of my favorite quotes from Leonardo da Vinci. He says that simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. Now, that might sound super fancy, <laughs> but it, think about it for a second. It's actually very difficult to have clarity. It's also very difficult to build something truly valuable that is simple. And there's massive unnecessary complexity in most companies. If you look at what really Steve Jobs did with the iPhone, is he built this elegantly simplistic thing. Now, there's massive complexity in the guts and the hardware and how it was assembled and how they manufactured it. It was a complete chaos nightmare to make it exist, but then the final product was simple. So when it comes to your business, my goal for you is to be really clear and have a simple, an elegantly simple, clear understanding of what it is that you're doing, why you're doing it, and then help you eliminate all the time-wasting stuff that you're doing that isn't directionally pointing you towards whatever your big thing is, okay? So hopefully that sets the table. Check out my uh, next section here. It says the three lists. These are three lists of paper that live inside your brain and inside of my brain and inside of everybody's brain. There's three lists, and I'm going to break it down for you, and this is, this is a big breakthrough. The first list is your could list, okay? The one on the left, your could list. Now, this could list is very big. This is a list of all the things you could do, could be doing, could get distracted by, could do instead of what you're currently doing. It's really, really big. And the reason it's really big is I just scribble all these lines on here. The reason it's big is because you are not the only person that has access to this mental list that lives inside of your head. This list is in your head right now, whether you realize it or not, and it's big. This list is added to by marketers, by your friends and your family and your coworkers and your employees and anything that you see or hear anywhere all the time. When you are stressed and overwhelmed, everything looks like a shiny object to you. And so if your business is in constraint right now, uh, it's easy to get, well, I could do this, I could do that, I could do this. And you wind up not really doing anything or you do a whole bunch of the wrong things or you do things in the wrong order. And this is common and this is how 10 years can go by without any really major growth or difference for you. And I don't want that for you. The, the second list, on the other hand, 
is your should list. The should list is still too big, but it's shorter than the could list. And this list is shorter because the only people that have access to this list are the people that you give permission to speak into your life. You might have a weird Uncle Larry. I don't know. Maybe he's a nice guy, right? But there's these people around us that always say, you know what you should do? You ever had that happen? Well, you know what you should do, Randy, is uh, you should really do this and this. Well, if I were you, I would do this and this. And the, <laughs> these ideas get into your mental second list called the should list. You should do this. You should do that. This is expectations of other people on you. Societal expectations, religious expectations, familial expectations from your parents or your high school guidance counselor. I don't know, but it's all this external pressure that you should do this. You should do that. You should be like this. You should do it this way. And it slows everything down. It creates literal overwhelm and it makes you not happy. It makes you not happy because you're not clear on what your mission, mandate, purpose, and destiny is for you. You're not clear on how to use your business like a slave to serve you and your family, okay? The third list is the only list that matters. This is your must list. The problem, however, is that no one knows what's supposed to go on this list. If I was to ask you what should be on your must list, Unless you have a razor sharp, crystal clear primary objective, or sometimes I call it success criteria for your life, for your company. If you don't have a specific, measurable, time bound target that you're aiming at, that you're directionally pointed at, if that doesn't even exist, there's no way that you could know what to put on your must list. And this causes confusion and overwhelm. And the really ironic part about this is that the smartest people struggle the worst with this issue because they're painfully aware of everything they're bad at. They're painfully aware of their own inadequacies. They know they don't have it all figured out because they're smart. They're aware there's this much I could know, but I only know this much. And they don't know what to pick. They don't know what their goal is. They're not pointed at anything. It's kind of like if you had a sailboat in the Gulf of Mexico and it's moving. I mean, you're doing stuff. <laughs> you're, you might be busy, but are you being productive? And, and how do you know if you are being productive? Well, you can't know unless you have a primary objective. You have a destination, GPS coordinates targeted in. Now, sometimes people don't like to pick uh, specific outcomes or goals for themselves because they feel like they can't change their mind. But that's not true. All I need for you to do today to get unstuck and to get more clear is to pick, even if it's a placeholder temporary uh, primary objective, we need to pick something to optimize towards. Are you following me? You picking up what I'm throwing down? I love you. I care about you. I want you to crush it. But we have to have clarity. We have to have clarity. All the high achievers are clear. They know where they're going, when they want to be there. They reverse engineer it. There's a process to it. There's a cadence to it. There's a fire in their belly because they know that they're chopping wood in a particular direction on the journey towards the mountaintop of their choosing. What's your mountaintop? What is it? Once you know what it is, then we know what to put on your must list. Then we can measure everything that you could do or everything that other people say you should do. We can measure that against your mountaintop. And what's cool is the, your primary objective behaves as a plumb line for you. A plumb line is the string and it has a weight on it and they use it in construction to set, you know, true 90 degrees from the ground up and down. Uh, it, it, it's like your, your measuring stick, so to speak. Your primary objective is your plumb line. So I'll give you an example. Let's say that you want to have $100,000 in cash 12 months from now, or you want to hit a million dollars in revenue uh, 12 months from now. When you have a specific thing that's time bound, we're going to make all the decisions of what you should be doing so you can get unstuck by measuring it against your plumb line. So if your goal is to have $100,000 in cash in the next 12 months, and then you get presented with the opportunity to invest in a new startup, okay, what do you do? Oh, I don't know. But now you know how to figure it out because you say, okay, I have $50,000. They want me to invest 30,000 in this startup. And he's my friend from high school. He's a nice enough guy. I don't know. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. Well, you get to, you get to measure this opportunity against, does this move me closer or further away from my current primary objective of having $100,000 in 12 months? Well, the answer is it moves you further away. And so in, in that case, it's a no or it's a not yet. You might say, yes, I'll invest, but not right now because I'm staying focused. I have tunnel vision and I have clarity on my primary objective. This gives you literal rocket fuel to move faster. And if you think about it, making money has a lot more to do with 
time and speed than it does with the money itself. Because a million dollars over 30 years is not the same thing as a million dollars over 30 days. And when you're clear and you can say no to things and you're mostly working things that are on your must list and you have momentum and fire, you can go really fast. You feel different. You show up to work different and you, you get 10 times the result with 10 times less effort just from having clarity. Remember, Leonardo da Vinci said, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. Do you know what you want? Are you really clear? And let me give you some tips here in conclusion on things you can do, okay? The first thing I'd recommend anybody and everybody do on a regular basis that I do, my wife does, that we've done for years, is we call it a strategic reset. A strategic reset is an opportunity for you to pattern interrupt yourself, okay, and, and break the frame that you're currently in. Because if you are just going through the motions and you have been for a long time, there's no way you're just going to watch this YouTube video and it will all click. What you got to do is you got to get away. You have to break your frame. You got to get out of your office, away from your business. I need 48 hours of just you in a different place so you can think with your brain uh, and sleep in and rest and then think with your brain some more about this question for you. You need a strategic reset. If you're a married entrepreneur, it's really useful to do this with your spouse. When's the last time you got away and you just dreamed again? When it, when's the last time you just talked about the, the possibilities for your life, for your family, for your business, for your finance, for your fortune, for your legacy, for the impact, for your community, for, your, for everything, for your kids? When's the last time you've done that? It's probably been a really long time. That's a problem. Most of my friends that are, you know, million dollar a month entrepreneurs or more, they have quarterly resets. Not all of them, but lots of them do because they understand and recognize the importance of clarity. So do this. If you don't have a lot of money, it doesn't matter. Go to the Best Western. <laughs> go get a tent and go in the woods. I don't care where you go, but it can't be the normal pattern of your life right now. We're going to break the pattern, strategically interrupt your life so you can think. You can think. I always say, and this is true, and I'll say it again, you're always going to make more money with your brain than you ever will with your back. You're not going to get unstuck by working harder on a whole bunch of the wrong things. You're going to get unstuck by getting clarity. The clarity is the superpower. That's why it's so beautifully simple, but it's true. And people hear this and like, oh yeah, great tip. And then they don't do it. And then they don't do it. Are you going to do it? Book it now. Go this weekend, take a Friday, Saturday and get clear. The second thing is to do a results review. What I mean by this is a little bit deep. First, I want you to understand that confidence is a superpower, okay? When you're not clear and things are out of control and you're overwhelmed, you don't have confidence. Your confidence gets rocked. But you need to understand that confidence is actually a derivative of evidence. And stay with me for two seconds here. Confidence is the natural byproduct of evidence. And the results that you're getting or not getting in your business right now, the money, your bank account, the employees, the culture, the way it feels while you're building your company, all of that is evidence and it can be negative or positive evidence. It can be <laughs> evidence that it's not working. It can be evidence that you hate what you're doing, but that gives you either positive confidence or inverted negative confidence. When I say a results review, what I want you to do is really ask yourself, is, is my current situation serving me well? Because there's a difference between, you know, muscling through and doing hard things and sticking it out and having grit. That's one thing. But a lot of people get stuck in an infinity loop, becoming a hardologist where they're doing really non-productive things for decades and it's not going to change. So for you, if you look at your results, the money that you have, the customers, the growth, you as a person, is your health out of whack? Is your relationship worse after you started your business or better? How are you as a parent, as a brother, as a son, spiritually with your connection with God? How are you doing? This is an like a judgment zone, just take like an honest assessment and review the results you're currently getting because it's going to give you great clarity. And if things are out of whack, for a lot of people, I already know they are, then there's no judgment. But what you're doing is you're recognizing this is broken. Okay. And that's really important because now we have a list of things that are broken. We have a list of, it's, it's almost like a, a box of Legos that are dumped out on the table. And we're like, okay, this is definitely worse. This is broken. I thought this would be crushing it, but it's very broken. This is good though. This is good. You need to review the results so we know what to even try to fix. Okay. Now that we have our Legos on the table and we've looked at the good results and the bad results, we've reviewed it. Now that we have it, the third step is DEO. 
DEO, we're going to delegate, eliminate, or outsource all of these problems. So if you have a problem with, with one thing, we're either going to stop doing that thing altogether, or we're going to delegate it to someone on your team. Maybe you're doing low-level tasks in your business that don't make a lot of money, like you're doing all the customer support emails because you think you're Mr. Perfect and you have to have your fingers on everything. Maybe that's holding you back. Cool, we're gonna delegate that to someone else, or we're going to eliminate it altogether, or we're gonna outsource it. So let's recap here for a second. You're gonna get away for 48 hours and think with your brain. You're in search of an elegantly simple primary objective for yourself. You can change it later as you get more clarity, but we need something to start with. Then you're gonna review your current situation, the results, the good and the bad. That gives you a list of all the problems and the good things. We need to do more of the things that are useful in producing results, less of the things that are not producing results. Then we're gonna delegate, eliminate, or outsource all of this stuff. So what ends up happening is you optimized, you've optimized your own labor because we're going to ascend you from doing menial, low-level tasks that produce no real yield to you so that you're mostly working on the big, needle-moving, earth-shattering, game-changing stuff. And then, of course, last but not least, you have to take massive, imperfect action. Is that right? Action here. Massive, imperfect action. I actually have a T-shirt that says massive, imperfect action. It doesn't need to be perfect. You just need to begin. And when you get stuck again, you're going to do the same process over and over. It's constant iteration. It's constant refinement, right? This is a very practical, uh, tactical thing that can really move the needle for you. It can change your life. I hope this is like giving you goosebumps and inspiring you because I want good people like you to actually win. I want you to go faster. I want you to grow and expand and get ahead. I'm not trying to be a cheese ball. We need good people to win narcissistic, wicked, bad people are building really big companies. I need you to build a really big company. There's orphanages to build, there are missions to fund, there are impacts to be made, and it's gonna come through entrepreneurs like you. But don't get in an infinity loop and a mental rut for the next 10 years. Let time just elapse by where nothing meaningful is growing or changing for you. Don't pretend that you being busy is the same as you being productive. And don't pretend that you have to live your life based on Uncle Larry's expectations. What is your purpose? What is your mission, mandate, and destiny? There's clues everywhere. Ask people that are close to you. What is your superpower? What, what do they see you as your highest version of yourself? What are you naturally good at? What comes easy to you and hard for other people? Let's get you going and pushing you in that direction. Uh, anyway, I hope you're getting value out of this. If you enjoy the War Plan briefing videos or this one, War Plan Tactical, where I break it down, we go a little bit slower. Let me know if there's something you want me to talk about. Type it in the comments. I read all of them. We only got like 17 subscribers, right? So you're here at the right place at the right time early on our journey to get the message out on YouTube and to help entrepreneurial families win. My name is Joshua Latimer and subscribe if you haven't, like, hit the bell, share this with someone that needs to hear it. And until next time, see you in the next video.